let's get right into the highlights. We'll go through it. We'll talk more about that later, Coach. Your team being physical. Clearly, the uh, fourth quarter, the defense not allowing any points all season in the fourth quarter. That's an unbelievable statistic. Coach, the crowd, unbelievable crowd. I mean, top notch, as good as it's ever been. It was crazy. And then it's loud and it's, uh, you know, it's it's the greatest home field advantage I can speak of. You know, we've been undefeated for a long time. Coach, Darren Thomas made some great choices right off the bat. I mean, the, the defensive end collapsed down right on top of LaMichael and Darren, good decisions. And then you start spreading them out. We did. That was our plan going in is making sure we attack them all across the width of everything, you know, get the ball off to the perimeter early and make them defend the entire field. And, and that's what really gets our, our game going, making them spread from sideline to sideline. Paulson with a 13-yard reception there. And then Thomas over here to LT, 2 and A, splits the gap there. Nice gainer for 16 yards. And uh, they picked up a unsportsmanlike penalty in here, Coach, and you had a procedure penalty. That kind of stopped the momentum of the drive, and then they buttoned up on their defense here. They did, you know, when we tried to get the ball outside on an option play and we didn't get to the perimeter, but to come away with that opening drive and get three points, we, we, were, we were pretty happy at that point in time. So the Cardinal come right back, and uh, as they have been all season, very efficient on offense, and so you get your first look at what they do from a running back standpoint, and uh, they started to load that one side coach and try to go to it, but also they're very balanced, aren't they? They are, and that was the one thing that really made you defend, defend everything is that Andrew Luck is such a good quarterback that complements that great running game that they have is that, you know, we knew that they were going to test us everywhere, on the flank, up the middle, uh, outside, you know, it was going to be a battle. A group of good receivers, uh, Coach, but led by Owusu. A deep threat, and yet they controlled these little short passes to begin with, conversions on third down, and, and kind of got into their mode, their game mode here, it looked like. It did, you know, and again, it's a tough, it's a tough offense to defend because they can do it all, um, and the quarterback can run. And he's tough. So it was, it was quite a combination that we had to handle, but I was really impressed with our, our defense overall, you know, really especially the adjustments they made at halftime. Whalen makes a good catch. Good coverage was there. He just fought the ball away. 7-3, 18-yard touchdown for uh, Stanford. They take the lead here in the first quarter. A long drive as well, about six minutes long. And then they kick it off, and uh, Cliff Harris looks like he might try to break something out on the other side of the field, but loses the football. Stanford has good field position. Your defense has to come right back out. Yeah, we, we've talked about this. You know, we're, we're turning the ball over too much in our special teams, and we got to do a better job of that and clean that up because that's going to come back to haunt us. Well, you got him into a third down situation, Coach, which is exactly what you wanted to do, but here's what you talked about with Andrew Luck. He can do so many things to you. Yeah, that should be illegal, to be honest with you. I mean, he's such a good quarterback. The fact that he can run that well, too, is, is really makes it difficult to defend. But um, I'll give him all the credit in the world. He, he's the best quarterback we've faced in a while. Ten-yard touchdown makes it 14-3, to and the offense comes right back. LaMichael James, 20-yard run, starts off uh, what is really a spectacular day. But his uh, running, I think people around the country got a chance to see how physical too, coach. He's very strong, and I, I don't think he gets enough credit for how physical and strong a runner he is, and I, he really was had that on display uh, yesterday. Well, Darren Thomas, again, just gets better and better each week. Made a couple of mistakes in this first half, coach, but nothing bothered the guy. He just comes right back, hits Jeff Mail on the outside, and the inside-outside game really had Stanford off balance. It's just in that first quarter, they didn't equal points. No. And, and again, we, we uh, got caught with a penalty and then got backed up a little bit and tried to screen pass here on third down. And Chase Thomas, their real good outside linebacker defensive end, made a great play. So they get the ball back, and Stephen Taylor takes the handoff. He gets through the hole and keeps his balance, and away he goes. Off to the 44-yard touchdown run. That makes it 21-3 to at that point. And uh, I know the fans were... The fans know what the score is. <laughs> they're looking at the scoreboard. But there's so much time we talked about, hey, okay, well, you know, it's still a minute in the first quarter. A lot of time for your football team, how fast you score, and you get right after it on the next drive, Coach. Yeah, we had a bounce back. And we knew that they were going to be a good football team. I don't think we were going to spot them 21 points, but um, it was about just missed tackles. We had guys there to make the play on that run, but we didn't. So it's time for our offense to come out the field and answer, and that's what they did. 2 and 8 for 6 yards on the completion. And then uh, one of your emerging stars on this football team is Darren Thomas is off to what turns out to be a great day. But spreading the ball around, here's Josh Huff, physical runner. He picks up 12 yards, and that ends the quarter. And so your team is moving the football, so there's no you know, real panic about that. Just the score is what the score is. And 
you know, I, I know you talked about it, Coach, we started the show, but, uh, you know, there's your team's not been down 21 to 3, but I know your team also has a lot of confidence. They do, and we know we got to play a full football game, and, and that's what we pride ourselves on is that, you know, I talk to our guys about play a full 60 minutes, and then we'll pick our head up and see what the score is at the end of the day. You know, you can't get too high at certain points. You can't be too low at certain points. You just have to keep playing, um, and this team understands exactly what we want from them from a philosophical standpoint, and, and they go out and execute. Well, it's a storm. I mean, it's 10 defensive backs, it's six linebackers, it's 10 defensive linemen, it's all the offensive linemen switching in and out, the running backs, it's a swarm that hits the Stanford Cardinal. From that point on, what is it, 45 to 10? From this point on, we established, I'm not a good mathematician, it's 49 to 10 after that first quarter. <laughs> And uh, the Ducks are rolling, aren't they? Oh, they are. And, Coach, you, you, the, the success of the inside-out game, particularly the screen passes out the, the, on the outside, begin to take their toll here in the second quarter, don't they? Yeah, it really is just a mathematical equation. So, Joe, you'd struggle with this one. <laughs> how many guys do they have in the box dedicated to the run, and how many guys do you have out wide? And if they're going to try to put extra guys in the box, we need to throw the ball out wide. And if we can't get our guys out wide involved in the game, then they're going to continue to try to shut down the running game. And, and that's what you need receivers out wide that are willing to block and willing to sacrifice for the other guys. And, and that's what we did. And you start to see that effect as we start to keep throwing that out there. The defense has to widen out and defend that. And now the run game starts to open up. So they both kind of complement each other. Let's get right to it here in the second quarter then. Oregon with the ball after uh, moving the football to end the quarter. And here's Michael James up the middle for 13 yards. And Again, Darren Thomas really starting to look sharp, sharp in this game, and, and boy, it, look, it can't even go down. But Darren Thomas starting to feel, feel it, hitting everybody. Again, getting the ball in and out. Um, you'll see when we go in motion, if they widen, we were running the ball, and sometimes they stayed in the box and we threw the ball. We had to take kind of what they were giving us and, and, and uh, felt like our plan going in was starting to work here. For the snap, got it, going to go back to throw. Looks on oh, a down the middle, wide open. That's a Jeff Mail touchdown. Little pump fake. Stanford bit, and nobody was on Jeff Bale. Coach, now we get a look at what a success of that passing game outside does. Yeah, to defend what we're doing out wide, you really got to drop your safeties down, and then we caught them if they're going to drop their safeties down. We ran a similar type play against Arizona State to Josh Huff. You know, it's kind of the third component of what we're doing and making them defend the field not only from sideline to sideline, but from end zone to end zone. So that makes it 21-10. to 10. Surprise, surprise. And Taylor furthers to lay up at the 10. Here's Beard's approach to the ball. And goes with the onside kick, and Oregon got it! Stanford never saw it coming. Coach, great execution by your kicker. We practiced this all week long. Tom Osborne saw something in their uh, kickoff return unit that, you know, we talked about last Sunday night, actually, that we had a chance if they lined up the same way to surprise on, onside kick. And we had the plan all along that we were going to kick off once. And if it was the same look, whatever the second kickoff happened, we were going to do it. And, and that's how we practiced it, and that's how we executed it. People were wondering if it went 10 yards. It went 15 yards. So uh, people saw the line there. I think they thought maybe it was close, but it was a 15-yard job by uh, your kicker. Rob Beard did a nice job. Then Davis with nine, then eight yards for Darren Thomas. And then Darren Thomas again back to D.J. Davis for 14 more yards. And the offense is really going now. Yeah, great block by LT2 and a, and a tough physical run by D.J. And that's what we get out of our receivers. You know, uh, there's a toughness in those three guys. And actually with Josh off those four guys that play out there for us. The importance of getting points off this onside was huge too, wasn't it? Yeah, from a momentum standpoint, you know, the crowd was into it. And the fact that we could answer, you had them on their heels a little bit. On second down and short, give it to the Michael Lux in into the end zone. Stanford wasn't ready. Caught everybody by surprise. The TV networks, everyone. As you got quick on the ball, Coach, your pace in the first half was incredible. It's what we practice. Um, I think it gives us an advantage. It, it kind of takes the defense out of their comfort zone. And for our players, it's what they do every single day. So that, what, our, what is our comfort zone really is their discomfort zone. That makes it 21-17. So two quick touchdowns for Oregon. And uh, a lot of people are starting to feel like they're seeing something on the field that might lead to a big duck victory, which in turn happened, of course. Wilkerson, 11 yards on the play here. Uh, I thought Stanford showed a lot of character here, Coach, coming right back after you had the onside kick touchdown. Stanford's a good football team and is going to win a lot of, lot of football games this year. Jim Harbaugh does a tremendous job. You know, whenever you got that quarterback in the scheme they run, which is so diversified, that they're going to win a lot of games this year. 
They run everything on the game, very like that. Sets up other plays in this game. Obviously, on this drive, it does a little bit later. An unfortunate penalty right there for you. Yeah, I don't think Josh shot a bone, and, you know, he was just trying to make a play and playing hard, and, and uh, you know, we got caught, and that extended the drive, and, and, and that hurt. Luck with a five-yard run there, big physical runner. Then on play action, he looks downfield, and he has Fleener wide open for the touchdown, 36 yards. That is their final touchdown of the game. Makes it 28 to 17, and a uh, nice play, but plenty of time left in the half for Oregon to come right back, and that's exactly what your team does, Coach. Again, you did this a lot last year, too. Great teams punch back, don't they? You hope so. <laughs> now it was going to be a long day for us, but the one thing I, I, I like about this team is that um, they don't play to the scoreboard. They just continue to play and keep chipping away, and, and eventually they know things will break because our conditioning will really take effect. This was big. This is a third and 15. Thomas to two and eight for 14 yards, and then you made a big call here, Coach. Fourth and one. Yeah, I thought we were going to get it, so was, I didn't know, you know, really concerned with the balls on the field, the way we were playing. I felt like it was an easy, an easy decision. Then Darren Thomas takes off for 22 yards on the play. This is a second and 10 play, and that has set up another big one for Darren Thomas. Wait for the ball. Got the snap. Back to throw again. Going downfield. Going way down. He's got Huff wide open. Touchdown, Oregon. Touchdown, Josh Huff. Coach, he, he kind of double-clutched this, and it looked like he wanted to maybe go to Jeff Mayo. Maybe not. Couldn't tell, but he waited the right time and put the ball in the money, didn't he? Darren made a great read. You know, we're running four vertical concept, and Jeff was the first look, and the corner squeezed him, number nine, and so he went back outside, and, and Josh Huff was wide open, you know, covered by an outside linebacker, and we'll take that matchup any day. Game got a little defensive after that point. Stanford had scored touchdowns on their first four drives of the first half, and and this possession was 5.41 to go in the first half. Luck hits Revlin for seven yards on this play. Works his way up a little bit in the pocket for the completion. And then goes incomplete. And this is the first time your defense stopped him, Coach, and maybe give a little, little confidence to the group. It did. You know, we're starting to get settled in and, and understanding how they're trying to attack us. And um, I thought Nick did a great job of making some adjustments within the second quarter and, and definitely at halftime of, of, of uh, trying to take away what they were trying to do to us. Got the ball right back, so with the ball and a chance to take the lead here before the half. Here's Davis for eight yards, and then on second down and two, Davis again for two yards, picks up the first down, moves the chains, and then this one, uh, Darren Thomas, probably would like to have back, Coach. I'd like to have it back. That would have been a lot easier for us, but, you know, I'll give their free safety credit. He did a great job staying in the middle field, reading the quarterback's eyes, uh, and made a great catch. Well, what an important drive here for Stanford, your coach, trying to put some points on the board if they can before the end of the half because they get the ball to start the second half, too. So leading by four, they had a little bit of a sense of urgency here to see if they can get some. They did, and it was important for us to, you know, see if we could hold them out at least from getting into the end zone. I thought our defense um, did a great job of holding them just to three points in this situation, you know. Great play by Pazinger to come from behind and make a tackle that was going to be something much greater. And then Luck. It's not a sack. He goes forward for three yards, but it makes them attempt the field goal, a 46-yarder for Whitaker, and he knocks it through, and that is the half. 31-24 at the half, and it's not a whole lot different, Coach, than some of the other games you played this year against a Tennessee team that almost and probably should have upset LSU, and then a very, very good Arizona State team. Uh, you know, just trying to you get to half. There's a lot of football to play, but your depth, I mean, just absolutely takes over in these football games. We feel confident when we go in at halftime, you know, if the score's close, that we got a real good shot because of our conditioning and because of the amount of guys we're playing. And then you can also see the demeanor of the teams you're playing against where, you know, if they're dragging going into halftime and we're not dragging going into halftime, we feel like the adjustments our coaches will make uh, in, in the way our players buy into what we're doing, that we got a pretty good shot when we come out in the second half of football games. Let's move to the All second right. half. But, Coach, let's first talk about, uh, you know, something that I think you said to Aaron Andrews on the way in about, you know, defensive adjustments and, uh, you know, Nick Alioni makes the adjustments. Uh, you know, I said on the game that he deserves a game ball. I mean, 31 first half points, no second half points. And the way your defense played, I just thought Coach Alioni did a tremendous job during the game. Yeah, I, I coach on the offensive side of the ball, so I, I don't 
ever get involved. You know, we talk a lot in the offseason, philosophy and things like that, but, you know, I'm not a micromanager. We have a tremendous coaching staff, whether it's Nick or John Neal or Don Pelham or Jerry Azanero, and I got all the confidence in the world in those guys. And if I were to say something to them, I'd probably screw them up. So I leave those guys alone and, and let them coach, and that's, that's, that's why they're here, and that's what they do, and they did a great job. Um, in every game we played, I think we've given up seven points in the second half of football games. Um, through, through five games, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good stat to have. But um, those guys are tremendous football coaches, and, and uh, I got all the confidence in the world. And what a difference in two halves, Coach. I mean, no takeaways, obviously, in the first half. That changes in the second half. And really not much pressure on Andrew Luck. And that completely changed in the second half. So, you know, the adjustments, as you mentioned, were huge. They are. And I also think... Um, the amount of guys we play and the depth that we have is also part of that is that we wore them down and their old line starting to get tired because they keep getting new pass rushers coming in on them and whether it's Kenny Rowan then all of a sudden you see Deion Jordan then you see Brandon Vera then you see Brandon Hanna you know there's a lot of guys playing our guys are a lot fresher um, and that takes a cumulative effect over the course 60 minutes is a long time in a football game. Stanford starts with the ball in the second half and uh, so this was a huge possession. Coach this might be the possession of the game even though you picked up some turnovers later that were big but to not allow them score on this first possession Session to extend the lead, I thought was just gigantic, and it really gave uh, you know the mom momentum that you were building in the second quarter allowed you to retain that momentum. Yeah, they they could have come out and answered, and uh, you know you would have been like, oh God, you know what's going on here. But I thought our defense did a great job of, of stopping them, uh, putting them in a situation where we can get the ball back to our offense, and um, and then it was up to us to kind of go down and score and, and, and tie this thing up, and then let everybody know that we were in a football game. Well, some huge plays here, coach, and this being one of them as Andrew Luck tries to go big, and they tried to go big in the second half, but big offensive pass interference penalty. Yeah, anytime you get your hands extended like that, they're going to call it, whether you're an offensive player or a defensive player, and, and we've had our fair shares of defensive PI, so I was excited to see one go our way finally. They also come out trying to throw the ball a lot, I mean, just over and over. They think they saw something maybe at halftime to where they could throw the ball a little bit more, and Andrew Luck's percentage started to go down uh, quite a bit. This was a nice breakup by Cliff Harris, who almost had the interception. He'll have something to say about that a little bit later. And then they punt the football and they call a uh, interference to make the catch on this play and Oregon gets 15 yards. Jim Harbaugh was very upset about that. The rule is you have to make contact, right coach? Uh, I think you got to give him enough room to make a legitimate shot at catching the football so it doesn't always have to be contact. It's got to be does he have an opportunity to catch the ball. Darren Thomas on the run goes over 100 yards early in the game coach carrying the ball. Yeah, when defenses force Darren to run, he's a weapon. And when they don't force him to run, he's going to hand it off to a really good running back. So we feel like we got two great options in what we're doing offensively. Well, I thought what Darren did a couple times this game, Coach, as well as some of your other players, is in open field when there was a one-on-one -on -one type of situation, they made the play and Stanford didn't. Darren can do that. He's got great speed. He's uh, getting better as a runner. Um, it's things I've seen from him since he's been here. As, as he gets more familiar with what we're doing in our attack, I think you're going to see even more of that. Well, Michael picked up seven, and then Darren keeps it. Nice cut up field, 17-yard run. Also a personal foul on this play, and that set up our EA Sports play of the game. Gets back behind and running. Barner to his right. On the step option, going to go right. Thomas going to keep it. Oh, what a fake touchdown, Thomas. What a fake touchdown, Thomas. Put the ball like he was going to get rid of it and held on to it like it was a loaf of bread and brought it right back in. Try an example of making a one-on-one -on -one play out in the open field, Coach. We're running an option play here, and our front, our offensive line and tight ends do a great job of sealing the front. The two receivers run off, and number 28 is putting a bind. He's got to take the quarterback over the pitch, and Darren does a great job reading them and, and finishing in the end zone. So the game is now tied, 31 to 31. Stanford, though, trying to come right back again, wanting to be in the air. Looks like they would really want to get after it. And so Andrew Luck is going to go back to throw after we take a nice look at that handsome young man there, Darren Thomas, as you see the score, 31 all. And they come right back and want to throw the ball here, coach. And your secondary was around the ball a lot in the second half. They were, and I also think part of it was it, them throwing the ball was, was how good our run defense is. Um, and, and, you know, I know going into the game, there was a lot made of, um, you know, Stanford ran the ball fairly well against us last year, but I think a lot of that was Toby Gerhardt, and we watched the game and counted 25 missed tackles a year ago, you know, and the perception that their old line knocked us off the ball a year ago didn't happen. Their old line didn't knock us off the ball yesterday. Um, and, and, and you're going to struggle, I think, to run the football against this scheme we have, and then if you're going to put it up, 
Um, you know, the way our secondary is playing right now, I'm really excited about our opportunities. What a play there. Eddie Pleasant so fast, he ran faster than all the blockers. And uh, Andrew Luck made a great play to keep him out of the end zone, but a uh, very physical play. Thank goodness Chris Owusu is okay after this incredible hit. But this is a defense being very physical and opportunistic. That was Javis Lewis, you know, a real unsung hero for us on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and, and our defense leads the country right now in, in takeaways with 21 in five games, which is just outstanding. In, in, uh, you look at all those green jerseys down there, a heck of a play by Andrew Luck telling you what type of player he is. But, you know, I, I really thought this was the turning point in the football game for us. Well, Michael to the right of Thomas, first to goal from the three. It's through in motion. Give it to uh, LaMichael up the middle. Touchdown. They do it right away. Where was the ball? Well, I had the binoculars, and I had to wait until he turned enough and showed me the ball. A pretty good hole up front, Coach, but the linebacker's in the hole, and LaMichael just makes him miss. We had a play on where, you know, when they blitz, we got to let one guy go. We let the middle linebacker go, and I'll take LaMichael against the middle linebacker any day. First lead since three to nothing, 38-31. We heard a lot about Owen Maurice is both uh, playing both ways a lot during the week, and then LaMichael takes him one-on-one, -on -one. and that just gives you an idea how strong LaMichael is. Just bounces right off of a 250-pound, you know, linebacker that a lot of people think is going to be an All-American, and then Cliff Harris comes back. He turns into the receiver on the play and makes a great interception. Cliff did a great job cutting the receiver off, uh, getting inside position on him, and then when the ball's in the air, I, I Cliff's such a ball hawk. Well, I got a pretty good feeling he's going to go up and get it. Well, Coach, this is at a point in time when he makes his play, and you're right, perfect inside position. Stanford trying to get the touchdown right back to answer. And again, Cliff Harris, who, uh, as you mentioned, you know, and we saw the fumble on the kickoff return, and yet one of those resilient guys, just like Darren Thomas, Cliff Harris, your team overall, the guy just keeps playing, doesn't he? He does. Cliff's a competitor, and he's getting better and better each week, and really impressed with how he's, he's improved from game to game. Ducks get the ball back. Holes start to get bigger. There's LaMichael James for 15 yards, and a little bit reminiscent of a drive you had at Tennessee where you just start overpowering the line. Looked like they were getting pretty tired here. There's a cumulative effect to what we do, and, and, and when we start wearing you down and getting those big bodies leaning on you, and, and you running backs are pounding up in there like Kenyon and LaMichael did, um, you, they're bound to break one at some point in time. Boy, I had a chance to really possibly put the hammer down. We're still in the middle of the third quarter, so maybe a little bit early for that, but up by seven, a great opportunity on this drive, I know, for you guys to put a little distance between you, and yet Stanford made a play, didn't they? They did. They did, you know, and we knew that was going to happen. This wasn't going to be a walk-away type game, and it's a good football team, and, and they stopped us there, and, and uh, now it's time for our defense to go back on the field and answer. They get the ball back here with the one-yard run, and Spencer Pazinger, that's a big-time play by Spencer Pazinger. And then, look at this. Look how many guys are rushing. Two, and he goes down. Kenny Rowe with a big sack. Kenny's a dynamic football player for us, and he's a very difficult guy to block one-on-one, -on -one, and they left their tackle on him one-on-one. -on -one. Even though we only rushed two guys, it was still a one-on-one -on -one battle, and, and uh, Kenny's tremendous you know, in working those situations and understanding how to set up um, offensive tackles with his, with his speed on the edge. Well, we talked about it last week, field position in the punt game, and here's your opportunity, Coach. Great field position at their 48, and you guys take advantage of it. Some play action pass mixed in there with the run, you know, getting the ball spread around the perimeter, an option play here. And the Mike makes a great catch. We got some great blocks on the perimeter and, and we're really attacking them across the, across it. Out wide, throwing the ball up the middle, a lot of different things. Quarterback keepers, it's it's uh we have the whole package going. Three more yards for LaMichael James, 38-31. The numbers are starting to pile up. Darren Thomas over 100 yards. LaMichael James already at 150. Darren also 200 yards through the air. And the score, finally in Oregon's favor at 38-31. The momentum is on your side, Coach. Uh, boy, the, and the crowd is the crowd is going. I mean, it just felt it just felt right, didn't it? That yeah, point. there's an electricity in, in the air when you play in Oxen Stadium. And uh, we're undefeated last year at home. We're currently undefeated this year at home. And it's, it's a huge advantage. And our, our crowd's awesome. They know when to cheer. They're educated. They're passionate. Uh, I may not be able to hear when I'm 50, but I'll, I'll take it. It'll be worth it. Yeah, it'll be worth it. Yeah, and it might even have got even louder and more exciting even in the fourth quarter as Oregon started to work their way to a win against the number nine team in the country and to keep themselves on top of the Pac-10 Conference. Here we Oregon football with Chip Kelly, the return of the quack edition here on the, after the new song is out. And uh, I would say the fans were fired up. They, they enjoyed that. 
Just as a side note, that uh, video already has more than 300,000 views on YouTube. It shows you the popularity of the ducks. 300,000. We're taping this on Sunday night. That's in two days' time. 300,000 views. How about that? That's good, isn't it, huh? Just That's a little fact. A bit of fun. A little bit of fun. Proving that I'm better at math. Oh, than man. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Well, it's popular. I mean, it, yeah. it's the duck is it right now. He so. is. Coach, you head into the fourth quarter, and what's amazing is you start it with a bang, and everything starts to take effect. Your outside, your inside game, now play action fake right off the bat for, uh, to start the fourth quarter. It is. When you, when you see a defense starting to make plays with their secondary, getting involved and making as many tackles as their secondary had to make, you know, you, you have to get them now to defend the entire field vertically and, and uh, setting up the play action pass, and we felt like we had a good play call. I was trying to get it called. Uh, we barely just didn't get it off right at the end of the third quarter. I really wanted to get it called in, but, you know, we felt like we'd give it, to give it to him out of a different look, and we did. Um, made a good adjustment, and, and uh, our players picked it up. You watched their secondary, the two guys that were in man coverage, um, let their guys go just for half a second, and that's all it takes. And Drew Davis ran a great route in Durham, put the ball on the money. Let's get to it. First play of the fourth quarter was a big one for the Ducks. Here is Thomas. Well, Michael, no, that's Barter to his left now. And Thomas going to keep it back to throw the ball. Down to the end zone. Got him. He's got it. Not only does Drew run a great pattern, but Darren Thomas stands in there and takes a shot, Coach. Yeah, he stands in there as good as any quarterback I've ever been around and, and just focuses on his target, puts the ball out there and takes a shot. And, and, you know, you, you, you'll see him grow as a leader, and our players talk about it. They kind of marvel at him on film as the shots the kid's taking over the course of these first five games and stands in there, and, and uh, our players love playing with him. That makes it 45-31. A team like Stanford is not going to lay down, though, even though they've allowed a lot of points now in the last you know, two and a half quarters, per se. They're not going to lay down. They come back and start to pick up some good chunks. That was Andrew Luck for 21 yards. And they start to work their way down the field. Coach, see, it's not easy, though. It's third down every time, first, second, third, first, second, third. They didn't convert on this, except when they got down into the red zone. They were not able to do it. It, it, we, our defense knew they had to make it difficult, not give up an easy score when you're up 14 and make them go the distance. If they go the distance, they're going to have to work the clock and then eventually that's going to come out to our, our advantage because there's probably not going to be enough game to get those two scores in. Coach, it's amazing, too. This is a team that's very confident when they get in the red zone. Had not been stopped all year long in the red zone, and yet you stop them twice here and it, late in the game in the fourth quarter. And, again, huge plays right here. You stop them just short of the goal line. Who knew how big a play that was going to be until you see this one? You got to keep fighting, and you got to keep battling. You got to not worry about the goal, the score, or the play clock, or anything like that. And and eventually, good things will happen to you. And, and our guys are living this right now. This is fourth and goal from the six. Luck looking around. Great defense gets it knocked away. And Oregon holds and still has not allowed a point in the fourth quarter this year. This is five games in, not a single point in the fourth quarter, Coach. No, it was a great play by Anthony Gilden, who's playing fantastic for us at the corner and doing some really good things. And another guy in the secondary that's contributing a lot of good plays for us. The importance here, too, Coach, of getting this ball out away from your end zone. I mean, if you can put together a long scoring drive, great. But nonetheless, get the field position back. And that's what this drive really has an effect on, is to get it out of your own end zone and get it out of the shadow of your goalpost. It did, and, and we know with our kicker we can change the field position. It also burns about four minutes of clock. So. Jackson Rice back in the directional punt. Nice looking spiral, good hang time, and drives him right out of bounds. Doesn't get much better than that, does it, Coach? No, and that's one of our plays of the game for our special teams is, is that directional punt that Jackson had along with our onside kick. Cardinal come back. Luck to Whalen. They're pretty much exclusively through the air now, given the score and how much time is left on the clock. They continue to fight and work the ball down there. It's a nine yards and four yards and five yards. Again, Coach, like you talked about, you're making them work for it. But they were able to get a big one. Uh, here, this is a completion to Fleener that we're going to see one to Baldwin, but then they do get behind your defense for a big one after that. Yeah, and that's the one we probably want back. You know, we, we blew a coverage there, and, and we get a chance. Deion Jordan does a great job here uh, flushing Andrew and getting him to come out of the pocket, and, and uh, all of a sudden we lost some guy, and that ball was a little better thrown than me. He may have scored a touchdown. First down from the Duck 11. Here's Andrew Luck under center. Back to throw the ball. Looks left. Swings it to the corner for the fade. And it is... Intercepted in the end zone!
played perfectly by Cliff Harris again, Coach. Seals is receiver in the back corner of the end zone along the line, keeps the leverage, and then just plays the ball. Cliff does a great job when the ball's in the air. Um, you know, the ball's a little bit underthrown. Uh, John Boyack comes over and does a great job of helping, but uh, he, he's really, really good when the football's thrown. So it looks like that's probably going to do it, but the Ducks are not done yet after the big play. And there's a look at number 13, who's had, he had, who had a season worth of highlights to this point and only five games in with all the interceptions. And, the, and then uh, one last little message for all of those Heisman voters out there. Here's third down and three. And LaMichael up the middle, busts it, and he's gone! LaMichael James, baby, not going to catch that man! Ten, five, statement, 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 LaMichael James! Boy, Coach, look at the block it up front. Holmes, Kaiser, Asper, they really open up a nice hole for him. They do. We knew we had to get a first down here and, and probably seal the game with a 14-point lead. And um, and we talked about it all game long. I talked about it with LaMichael on the sideline that, you know, eventually one of these is going to break, and, and it broke for 70-plus in a touch. Well, 257 yards, three touchdowns for LaMichael James, 355 all-purpose for Darren Thomas and four touchdowns. And a great scene at Autzen on the field, game day, doing their post game. I mean, Oregon Duck football was on center stage on this Saturday afternoon and a beautiful day in the Willamette Valley, and Oregon delivered. Um, it's, it was a great game. Um, hats off to Stanford. Um, very talented football team, very well coached. Um, you know, hats off to the fans. They did a great job. Uh, you know, we got the best fans in the country. And uh, that was the most fun I've had in a football game in a long time. Yeah, it, it was really fun. You know, uh, you always want to play in these big games. Uh, I mean, I just lo I love these big games. I love playing in uh, these great opponents like Stanford, and uh, it really was a great atmosphere tonight. Um, had a lot of fun. Every time game day's here, you know, Austin's always jumping. Um, they opened up the student section for more students, so it was even louder than it usually is. So it was 10 times better than it usually is, and it's just a lifetime experience. Oh, yeah. Our coach, Coach Kelly, preached about finishing, so we know we're going to finish. We want to come out with some better starts weeks to come, but we, we know we're going to finish, so we just got to keep working, just keep grinding. Oh, I, I, think, I think we're doing a great job, but you know it's always room for improvement. You know, we still need the fifth game. We still got, what, eight more games to go, something like that. So, you know, it's always a it's, week way. We got to improve a lot more, a lot more, a lot more improvement, and especially on the defense side of the ball. You know, we felt like we gave up a whole lot of points. You know, offense do a great job at, at scoring points on the ball. We should have it back and, you know, try to limit the scores on other teams. So, you know, I feel like we got a lot of work to do. Well, we'll come back. We'll talk about Washington State, Coach. Again, they played a very good game against UCLA. Had some chances. They actually had a touchdown called back in that game that would have maybe changed the outcome as they took on the Bruins inside the Rose Bowl on Saturday night. We'll come back and talk about that with head coach Chip Kelly after this. Welcome back, everyone. Oregon football with Chip Kelly. And, uh, Coach, you're on the road to Washington State. Uh, the you know, the Palouse is always an interesting place to go. It's hard to get to if you're a Duck fan, but I'm sure you're going to have lots of fans there. They're starting to sniff a sellout as well. They have not had a sellout in a long time. They have homecoming. It's parents' weekend. It's, you know, in the afternoon, a 2 o'clock start. So uh, we think there'll be a big crowd there for your team to, to visit you in Martin Stadium on Saturday. Martin Stadium is a very difficult place to play. Um, they've got a good home record themselves. I know... Uh, the Ducks went up there a couple years ago and and, uh, and lost. You know, I think it was three or four years ago. Um, we're we're really very, very well aware that no one in this conference you can overlook, um, and, and they'll have our full attention starting on Monday. And anytime you're playing a team that has a pretty mobile quarterback, it can cause some problems for you, can't it? Yeah, he's a young sophomore, Jeff Tool. He came in last year, about three or four games into the season, played his, you know, his kind of his opening debut was at USC in the Coliseum and did a great job. Played against us uh, last year out here. Um, I, I think he's one of the good young young quarterbacks in this league. He's a sophomore. Darren's a sophomore. Barkley's a sophomore. Lux a sophomore. Cats at Oregon State is a sophomore. There's, there's some talented quarterbacks in this league, and he's one of them. Well, best of luck at that game, Coach. A little TV situation on that. I know there's lots of things going around. The game will be played at 2. We'll have a delayed broadcast for you at 6.30 right here on the Oregon Sports Network. Uh, the Pac-10 Conference did not allow the waiver at 4 o'clock, which was when both teams could televise it. The Washington State partner cannot clear the game on their station, and so that made it be at uh, 2 o'clock. They couldn't move it up earlier because of their homecoming festivities, and so you will uh, have to watch at 6.30 
right here on this very station for the Oregon-Washington State game, and then, of course, the ensuing replays, and then, of course, Coach will be back here to wrap it up next. Uh, we'll tape on Sunday, and folks will see it Monday night at 8 o'clock right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Thanks again for coming in. That was fun. No problem. What, what time is kickoff on Saturday? I'm going to work on my math. Right <laughs> you know, the numbers thing I just don't have down. Just, just, you know. there. You just okay, get there. Just get there. Uh, okay. Six, okay. Uh, six thirty to watch it right here on Comcast Sportsnet, and then two o'clock is when the kickoff is okay. in Pullman, and we'll be happy to see y'all in Pullman if you can make it as well. And then you know we'll just talk about when we're going to do this after that. We don't want to get too many numbers involved, right? No, that's right. Okay. No. For Mike Jorgensen and the coach, I'm Joe John Santi. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time right here on Oregon Football with Chip Kelly. Win the day.